fighting broke out overnight between rival factions along the Israeli I'm so stressed. I have so much paperwork. I can't think straight. I can't relax. I need to pay my bills. I feel like I'm trapped. I'm running late. I need to get gas. I don't have the time. Everybody's doing things without me. getting fat. I can't relax. I don't recognize myself. I don't know what to do. I can't do this anymore. I'm at an all-time low. I wish it would just all stop. REST stands for Restricted Environmental Stimuli Technique, and it's just an acronym for floating. And essentially floating is um, you're suspended in about 10 inches of water with um, enough Epsom salt in there to make you float. So in these tanks, there's about 1,100 pounds of Epsom salt. And the water is temperature controlled so that you don't feel it. So it's set to skin receptor neutral, which is usually about 93.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And the idea being once you lie in there, you kind of lose that tactile sensation of being in the water. When you get in the tank, it picks you up and you're just, you're weightless. And at the beginning, you feel the water kind of moving around and you're kind of conscious of that. But over time, the water will still so that there's nothing going on. And then if you just let it, let it go, you kind of lose feeling of where you stop and the water begins. So there's not that clear boundary of like, my skin and then the world, you know what I mean? It's, so you, you're, there's almost a kind of merging of your experience and the environment, which is, um, it's really unique and it's hard to describe. And this is helping to build parasympathetic tone. So your, your, your autonomic nervous system has two branches, your sympathetic and your parasympathetic. Your sympathetic is your fight or flight. So that's what's getting you ready to escape danger, you know? And then your parasympathetic, they call it the rest and digest. And most of us live, we're, we're over sympathetic, you know, we have too much sympathetic tone and find it, I have a hard time down regulating, you know, just for all those reasons. We're always plugged in, there's just too much coming in that your brain, you know, like it, it responds to it like a threat. And so we're kind of living in that kind of hypervigilant, not able to really, to really relax, you know. And it comes with a lot of consequences, like your, your cortisol levels are high, which is kind of throws off your whole metabolism. And then the rest and digest part is undervalued because that's where we do all the important work. Like that's where you digest your food and that's where you, you know, rebuild muscle tissue and stuff. And, and we think about exercise and we think about exercise making you stronger, but exercise is a stress that your body then needs to recover from to adapt to. So you put stress on an organism and it adapts and that's, everyone wants the adaptation, but we only see the stress as the, as the, as the pillar of that, you know? A lot of times people with you know panic type disorders they don't they only associate um, their interoception which is your experience of your internal state as something to be afraid of so it's it's the kind of um, it's what brings the panic disorder so in the tank if they can connect with their breath and then they might start to hear their heartbeat and that's what a lot of the test subjects said was that it's the first time they ever heard their heartbeat not in a panic situation the more severe someone's anxiety or, or um, panic disorder was, the more benefit they found from floating. Claustrophobia is the biggest concern. We get that over and over and over again, and um, but it, it's yet to be an issue for us because you can leave the tank wide open if you want, and you can leave the light on, so you're just kind of lying in a in a bathtub, you know. There's that old Zen story of the of the general who went to see the Zen master, and he said, "Okay, you got to meditate for an hour a day." He said, I, I don't have time to meditate for an hour a day. He said, okay, three hours a day. <laughs> so, you know, like the people who have the most anxiety about being alone with their thoughts are the people who are going to benefit the most. You know what I mean? And, and, um, and so, yeah, I, I just tell people, you don't have to, don't put any pressure on yourself to find any kind of mystical state or, you know, like just, just let it be, you know. Chronic pain is a big one for us. And I think it's, I think it's linked to that kind of nervous system component because and people come out and say it's, they feel like they just had a massage, but it's it's like they did it, you know? Like it, it's very passive. So when, when they're lying there, they, they let muscles relax that might not have been relaxed for, for quite some time. And um, 
and they feel kind of pain free. So it, almost remembering what it's like to, to be without pain, you know, like, which is often what happens when people have chronic pain is they become so accustomed to their just being pain all the time that just a little window into being pain free can, can kind of reset how they, how they feel in their body, you know? When you have chronic pain, having a break from chronic pain, even for a short time, can really help you mentally get over the fact that you're always feeling pain. So floating is so good because it, just, it can just give you a break from, from everything. Just a split second of peace and serenity, um, which is pretty much like a meditation. It's like a modern day meditation. That's why I like it so much. When I have a good float, I get the sense that I'm not the center of my experience anymore. It's, it's weird to say, but you know, I'll feel, you know, like a, a water droplet on my, on my leg and it doesn't feel like it's happening to me. It just feels like it's happening. It's a strange, it's a strange thing. Like I'm, this, the kind of center of experience kind of drops away, which is, it seems kind of hokey, you know, but it's, it's, um, it's just a very different state from, from how we normally experience the world, you know, and, People always come out and they're trying to explain and they're trying to find the words, you know, but we don't really have the words to, to uh, describe that kind of um, experience. My first float was so good just because of the overall experience I got from it. Again, I really didn't expect anything of it and I, I feel I got a lot out of it. I felt it was so good just because just how I felt coming out of it. I felt so relaxed and so almost numb where I couldn't really even feel my body. I felt just pretty much like a buzzing where I just felt relaxed. And emotionally, it really took all the stress off my mind. Everything that I was thinking during the day kind of just floated away while I was in the pod, uh, which really helped because being a busy person in busy life, a lot of times you're super stressed and you just can't stop thinking of things. So it really helps to get your muscles relaxed and your mind relaxed. So you can go out during the day and it's almost like a fresh start in a sense. In the pod, you're in the water and you actually float quite a bit in the water, right? So it's not that hard to get really comfortable. You get in there and when I'm fully like stretched out, my arms don't reach the outsides of the tank. My head or feet don't touch the outside of the tank. Like you're in this big thing and it's black so you can't see. So you might as well be in the middle of nowhere. My experience floating was a very interesting one. The time that I was in the pod seemed to sort of, it, it was only a, a 60 minute float while they're regularly 90 minutes, but it felt like I was in there sim simultaneously for only one minute and like three hours. It was just a very interesting and relaxing experience getting some alone time. I got out and honestly, I didn't, I, it wasn't even that I was like, like a noodle. I felt like really good. Like I could go to the gym and lift a bunch of weights or something. Like I felt, I felt just in this really good mood. I came out, I was calm and I was just in that, that mood, I guess, that mode where you can just, you feel like you're just ready to go and you can do whatever you need to do. I think that it was a nice and interesting ex experience alone because it gave me time to sit back and reflect on my personal thoughts and my life at the time and to sort of rationalize within myself. I get a lot of people, a lot of athletes who float and just to kind of you know, de-stress from, from training load and, and also physically just to, to give their muscles a, a break. I feel like the floating does help me a lot. I, there's also a lot of professional athletes that have used floating uh, to get over their soreness from game to game since they're playing 80, 70, 50 games a year. So every time they come off, they have to feel 100%, which is why floating is turning so much more mainstream into athletes. And I feel like it's a big part of making you a successful athlete by just relaxing your muscles and mind so you're ready for the next game. Meditation just as a whole is a really big area that a lot of people, especially people who need it, ignore. They just, they try it once, like they sit down and they're like, I can't do it. But it's one of those things that you can't just give up on. It's, you really need to focus and just give it a shot because it will help and it, I guarantee you, if you, once you get going with meditation, it's awesome.
they're finding that you can teach meditation to a six-year-old, you know, like, and it's, it's super beneficial. Just learning to navigate that internal terrain, you know, and, and the world doesn't teach us that these days. School doesn't teach us that, you know, like, and there's just, every year there's just more and more to occupy us externally, you know what I mean? We, and we don't know how to manage that, you know, how to manage our, our, our mood and our state. And, and The first thing you do is put some earplugs in to keep the salt out of your ears and uh, then you have a shower and so you soap and shampoo, um, rinse off really good and then when you come out of, the t out of the shower you dry off and dry your face and so that way you don't want to rub your eyes because you got salt in your hands and you get salt in your eyes. It's kind of the one thing that we really stress, you know, just careful not to touch your eyes because that's no fun when you get salt in your eyes. And then you turn the light off in the room and then you get in and then the light music button are there. You can shut them off or leave them on if you want. You can choose to use a little neck pillow if you want and then you're lying there and then, then you're floating and then it's just all, it's all what you're doing after that. Yeah. Yeah.